Okay, so we decided uh, in the, the last video that we wanted to go to the top of the page from the bottom. We wanted to create a little link that would jump all the way to the top. All right, well, let's do that. First of all, one of the things I also want to point out is that this A tag is just floating around in the footer. I probably ought to put it in some sort of paragraph or something. So I will uh, go ahead and type a P tag here. And then I can take this last P tag and I can actually, uh, oops, excuse me. I can take this P tag, I can cut it with uh, either Command X or Control X on Windows, uh, and then paste with Command V as in Victor or Control V. Okay, so now we have uh, this link that is inside of a paragraph tag. Well, what I want to do is uh, I want to make this really explicit, and I can separate my two links. Uh, I can if I even if I stack them, the thing is, uh, an anchor tag is not block level. It's referred to as inline. So let me just, actually, let me just type this. And we'll see A, and then I told you it needs the value, or excuse me, the attribute of href. Okay. And then right now, let's just leave the, the uh, value for href blank for a second. Okay. And because I don't want this to go to a new a new page. I want it to actually stay on the same page and just jump to the top of it. I don't need to do a target new or anything like that. So I'm just going to close it and I'm going to say something like uh, back to top or something like that. Okay. Um, and this link, if even if I just leave it just like that, okay, and I look at it over here, you see that they're sitting side by side, right? with a little bit of space in between. Why they're doing that is because an anchor tag inherently is in line. Okay, they're inside of a P or paragraph tag, which is block level, but you have two inline things sitting inside of a block level tag, meaning that they're gonna sit side by side each other. So if you wanted some kind of visual separator, what you could do inside of this paragraph tag is uh, you could just go and type a pipe, okay? A pipe is the little character that is just above the return t return key if you were to hold down the shift key at the same time. Um, <clears throat> and let's just, it's just a little symbol that we can use so that there's some kind of separator between these two links, okay? Now, to know what the value is that we're gonna use that's gonna help us get to the top of the page, the thing that's kind of cool is if we scroll up here, let's take a look. Remember we called this section banner? Well, in HTML, you can use the name of an ID as a, it's referred to as a named anchor. So if I were to take the name of this ID and I were to tell that anchor link to jump to the place where banner is on the same page, then it would know to jump back up here. So I'm going to copy the name banner. I'm going to scroll back down and I can't just put, I can't just like put banner in there like that. That's not going to work. It's going to think that it's some weird name or a folder or it's not going to know what to do. What you have to do is you have to put a hashtag in front of it so that it's going to hashtag banner. And what that hashtag does is it knows that it's supposed to look in the same page for an ID called banner. Okay. So let's uh, go ahead and take a peek here. And if I click back to top, you see it jumped back to the very top of my page for me, which is pretty cool, right? Okay, now the other thing that would be kind of nice is at the top of the page here, if we had some links that would jump to the major sections of this page, like, for instance, a little bit about me, my goals, miscellaneous stuff, right? So they could be all internal, internal links. So, um, and it might be kind of nice. Uh, we could either put them at the very top of the page or we could have them uh, so that they're just underneath the hi, I'm so-and-so. Whichever you want to do is fine. Uh, I'll put them at the top of the page and you can always move them around later. Um, okay, so I am gonna still leave them, however, inside of the banner section. So I think I'm gonna put mine up here before the article and uh, there is a semantic tag that helps uh, users know that it's a form of navigation and it's called nav. Okay, and let's go ahead and do that. And inside of nav, what we want to do is actually create a list of three navigational places to go. So let's do unordered. We'll do an unordered list. 
All right, and then inside of that, we'll do some list items. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and do the, the bones of each one of these, and then I'll copy and paste. So I'll say A, and then href equals, and then I'll just put a pound symbol for right now, because I'll, you know, we're gonna jump to some place down here in the page. And uh, for right now, I'll go ahead and just put uh, something here, a uh, link. Okay, and we can always change that. All right, and then what I can do now is I can take this, I can copy it, and I can paste it, because we have three sections that we want to be able to jump to. So now we need to know what what it's going to be called that we jump to. Well, let's take a look. Remember, we created IDs for about, we created an ID for goals, and for MISC. Now, something that's very, very important is that if you have any capitalizations in, in here, then it, you have to make sure that your links are case sensitive. So if I were to put a capital A right there, and I were to go up here and put lowercase a, it wouldn't work. If I came over here and I tried to click that, see it's looking for something up here. It puts it in the URL. It says hashtag about, but there isn't anything with a lowercase. If I change this to the lowercase now, and I come back and I click it, it does jump for me, okay? So we have about, we have goals, and we have MISC, right? So I can put goals here, and I can put MISC, and remember you have to have that hashtag, and I wanna also say about me, and this is what people will see on the screen, and goals, anything that's in between the beginning and ending tag, and uh, miss, no, I'll just leave it at that for now because it's nice and short. Okay. Uh, all right. And I'm going to save this. I haven't saved it in a little while. And then if we took a look, you can see that it is working. And then you see that miss, right? It, it seems like it's jumping to my goals. It's only because the page isn't long enough. If we were to do this and make it really short, it would, well, it's still, it only jumps as far down as it can jump because the content's not long enough, but that's okay. Uh, if you were to go to goals, it goes exactly up to goals. If you go to about me, all right, it goes there, okay? And then also, I just noticed that a little bit about me, these things aren't capitalized while goals and miscellaneous stuff is, so I might want to fix that too. Okay, so... I'll actually just change that so that the L is capitalized, the B is capitalized, the A is capitalized. That way I'm just at least being consistent, okay? All right, and then it looks a little bit better whenever I go, let's try it again, whenever I go over here. Yeah, it looks like something that's got a greater sense of hierarchy, okay? All right. Um, and then the other thing I was going to show you, if you're interested, is you could easily move that right here. You could take this whole nav. If you didn't like it there, you could also cut it, and you could put it inside the article still, but you could put it below the aside. You could take it, and you could see how it would look different. All right. And then you could later, when we do styling, make these horizontal so that, you know, the header has a, a very visual break. So however you want these to, to be, it's all up to you. Okay. Um, and one other thing, too, if you wanted to uh, do this just so that you had a little bit of clarity, is uh, you could also go down here and near these articles, since they're actually destinations with links, you could uh, put, um, like, about article or something like that and then highlight it and then you could toggle uh, toggle it so that it had some sort of um, comment on it and I can just copy this and come down here and then I can go to the next one and I could say that this is goals and then I could come to this last one and I could say this is the miscellaneous okay all right, uh, so that's that. Now, there's one other thing that I would like to show you. Um, it's kind of, I think, useful because, like, you don't see, for instance, where it says article ID miss. Like, you don't really see any of that information, right? If you wanted to be able to, to look at this, there's this thing for Chrome. Firefox has a version of it, too. 
um, but I typically use Chrome, and that's what I'm going to use in almost all of my demos, is if you were to right click on any of these elements and you wanted to find out information about them, for instance, let's right click on uh, this picture of me, and we can say inspect. Okay, and what it does is it opens up the Chrome inspector, and um, you see that what's happening i want to show you two different things because we're using brackets see how it's got like this stuff that says data brackets id blah 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 right well we didn't put any of that in that's because we're using this in a temporary sort of like dummy web server that uh, brackets is using so that it can do a live render um, so if you wanted to really look at this using the inspector uh, not using the brackets live view like this, then what you could do is you could actually go into your file system and you could open it in Chrome, right? So you could go in here and you could say, I want to actually open this file in Chrome. And you see it looks different. It doesn't say 127.0.0.1. It doesn't have like that like weird live preview thing, all right? Because I turned off the live preview, it says live development session has ended, right? Okay, so I'm going to close that. It's actually using the file protocol to look at this on your computer. So now if I wanted to go and inspect this picture, all right, you don't see the weird stuff that says brackets data, okay? This is showing you what the page is rendering uh, based off of my HTML, okay, which is pretty cool. And if you can have it open up on the right side. You can also click these three little dots and you can dock it at the bottom if you want it at the bottom. You can also choose to undock it, you know, completely so that it's separate. I kind of usually like it on the side unless uh, I need to do it some other way for some reason. Um, okay, now let me show you a little bit about what this does. It's a little terrifying at first, but the thing is it's a wealth of information. Notice that as I hover over different HTML things, over here in the right side, that it's highlighting with colors, it's highlighting stuff. And it's showing you how much space it's taking up and I can also twirl that down and I can go inside of different things like that's that's the nav tag, that's the unordered list. I can twirl that down and look at each individual list item. I can twirl the list items down and look at the each individual anchor link. And what's kind of cool is that down here in the bottom right, it shows you the different color coding, right? So if I have image tag selected and I hover over this, it shows me that the actual element is blue. That's just the element. And that's taking, right now it's taking up 400 by 400 pixels. We haven't talked about padding, border, margin, any of that. That's part of the CSS box model. But if you wanted to just look at this, you could also see like, it. all right, look, I hover over padding. There's no color showing up. It means that there isn't any padding. There's no border, there's no margin, okay? Um, if I were to choose something like uh, the unordered list over here in the HTML, you would see that it highlights the element. There is some default padding. I didn't add it, but it shows you right here what the default browser style sheet is. It says user agent style sheet. That's the browser style sheet that it default default adds if you don't style it yourself. So you can see that that's the padding it's highlighting. Uh, there's no border, it shows you the default margin, and so on and so forth. It helps you understand how the browser is rendering out this HTML so that we can see it. It's really, really useful. Now, the other thing that's kind of cool that I was mentioning before is, for instance, if we were to scroll down and let's say go into this content section, see, See how it says section ID equals content? Well, remember we put that in the HTML, but you can't really see it just by looking at the page. So that's kind of nice because you can actually see that, oh, this article, it has an ID of about. This article has an ID of goals and so on and so forth, okay? So that's kind of cool, actually. The other thing you can do, and we'll talk about this later, you don't have to know it right now, but this is like a little mobile icon thing. If you click it, it'll show you what it looks like in different mobile views. Um, if you, you know, want to fool with that, to, to get out of that mode, you just click that again. Um, anyway, that's just a quick intro to the Google Chrome Inspector. We'll talk about it more with the next assignment when we get to CSS. That's the end of this assignment. Uh, upload your stuff to the server and let me know if you have any questions.